All right, good morning. I am calling to order our regularly scheduled meeting of the Committee of the Whole. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. I am the chair of this committee, and we are joined today by Council Members Gordon, Kano, Reich, Bender, Andrew Johnson, Yang, Quincy, uh, Council President Johnson. Um, I was just looking to see who else is coming. So, and we are a quorum of the committee. Um, we have one. Uh, this actually isn't a discussion item. This is just a uh, referral uh, or notice. Uh, this is uh, setting a public hearing for t September 21st, 2016, at the Committee of the Whole to consider an ordinance uh, amending Title II of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to administration, adding a new Chapter 18A for a target uh, market program. And so I'm going to ask my colleagues if we can vote to set that public hearing. Uh, any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that public hearing is set. Uh, Council Member Cano. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to uh, make a motion to amend today's agenda to have us uh, take up a discussion on the um, minimum wage um, current appeal at the Supreme Court. Okay, thank you. And Councilmember Kamo, I had understood you wanted to ask a question of the city attorney before formally making that motion. I just wanted to allow you the privilege of making, asking sure. that question if you want to, yep, and then we'll vote on your motion to amend. There, so the intent is to make a, a motion to amend today's agenda so we can have a conversation about the appeal that's currently active at the Minnesota Supreme Court on the minimum wage issue. Um, and it's twofold. One is, is a question. I've been getting a lot of um, questions from my residents about whether or not the city can appeal, um, can um, uh, withdraw our appeal from uh, the Supreme Court process. And that's a question that I would like to ask um, our city attorney to see if she can tell us what is that process like? Is it possible now after hearing um, the oral arguments yesterday, can we withdraw um, our appeal? And then the, my intent is, is to make a motion to have the city withdraw uh, our appeal. So, okay. the, so. So I wanted to, if we could just please let, uh, I wanted, I think that if someone who has a phone on could turn that one off. Thank you. Um, uh, so, um, sorry about that, I uh, got distracted by the phone. Um, so Susan, Ms. Siegel, if you would be able just, as we are informally talking here, which we can <coughs> always do in a committee, uh, answer Councilmember Cano's question. Uh, Madam Chair and Council Member Cano, because this matter involves something that's currently pending before the courts, uh, I don't think it's appropriate for me to answer that question without their first, oh. without their first being a vote on whether this council wants to waive the attorney-client privilege. I am bound by the rules of professional responsibility. Okay. Thank you. And I just want to ask if we can please do our business. Um, we are, uh, have council members who have motions before us. We have questions that um, are important to the public listening, uh, as well as to the council members to hear the answers. Thank you, Ms. Siegel. All right. Um, so then um, council member Kano's motion, is there something else you wanted to add to that, council member Kano? Yeah, I, in terms of um, transparency and, and clarity in the process so that our, our residents, our, our citizens, and our voters can understand and be a part of the conversation here, um, I would like to see if we can waive our, our client uh, attorney privilege to be able to respond to this question of whether or not procedurally it is possible for us to withdraw the city appeal at this moment in time. Because I don't want to make a motion on something that's not possible, procedurally possible to do. Do you see what, do you, is that clear? I don't, I don't want to make a motion to withdraw the city appeal if it's not legally possible for us to withdraw the appeal given that we um, heard oral arguments yesterday. So I just want clarity from the city attorney about whether or not we can do that. Okay. 
So essentially, I think this would be a motion to amend the agenda for the purposes of two then motions that you have identified. One was is about um, waiving this, the attorney-client mm -hmm. privilege, and the second would be, uh, depending on the answer on that, about a withdrawal of the appeal. Okay. Correct. So we have before us a motion to amend the agenda for the purposes of adding those two items. Um, and uh, any further discussion on that uh, uh, motion? Councilmember Fry. Councilmember Glidden, just to get some clarification. So the motion is to do what two things again? The motion is just to amend the agenda. But Councilmember Cano has um, described what her purpose to amend the agenda would be, which would be to add two items. One would be to ask us to vote on whether or not to uh, waive the city's the attorney-client privilege to uh, have the city attorney talk about something that she has identified as being covered by attorney-client privilege. The second would be uh, about uh, her, her question about uh, a vote on withdrawing the appeal regarding the um, petition. So is, is there's so the, a what would be before us right now is just a motion to amend the agenda that would then allow consideration of those those questions. And so I think your vote on the motion to amend the agenda is a little bit dependent on whether you think that those are things that you want to vote on. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So I'll just speak to that briefly. Okay, thank you. Um, I, uh, I support Councilmember Kano's uh, motion to amend the agenda. Um, however, I do not support the decision to waive attorney-client privilege, because I believe that's against the, the, the city's interest as a whole. Um, so uh, I think let's vote. So I guess the first vote is to amend the agenda, and I will be voting yes, and then I will guess I'll speak to the second. Okay. Any further comment on the motion to amend the agenda? Councilmember uh, Gordon. I'll, I'll uh, support this motion too. I think it's just kind of a courtesy and obviously this is a critically important issue that's before the city right now and I've gotten a lot of questions in the last few weeks about w what um, is the standing of the appeal, what authority do we have. Um, since we last uh, talked about this um, issue, there was a, uh, a very powerful court opinion that came out which obviously was on my side of the decision we made and I think there might be other council members who want the opportunity to express how that may have impacted their views over the course of, uh, of time. So I'll be supporting the put this on the agenda so we can discuss it properly before the committee. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion to amend the agenda? Council Member Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too am willing to extend the professional courtesy to my colleagues, um, but I wonder you know, I hope in the future we can expect the same courtesy in return. I'm, so one question I have is why, why haven't we, you know, scheduled briefings with council members that would not violate attorney-client privilege? Um, I, I hadn't heard about this motion coming before us, but we don't always do that. But um, as somebody who's about to vote in favor of putting this on the agenda, I just wish some of these um, information pieces had been shared or perhaps we could have had a special closed session as we often do, we did last time after our council meeting, a closed session, that uh, attorney-client privilege is often um, used to provide council members with information, uh, for example, in this case, when we have a pending legal matter. So I'm just kind of confused as to why this is coming. In this way, I, I'm all for transparency in government, but uh, we're also running the city here. All right. Um, and, and I just uh, kind of as a side note, I know I don't know if the clerk's office can help me. I'm not able to get the speaker management open, so I'm having a little uh, problem there. Um, you know, uh, I will say I came into this meeting uh, honestly uh, saying I would not support uh, the motion to amend the agenda. You know, I I, I frankly am. Um, um, open to amend the agenda if we're just able to vote on this, these items. I don't support either item, um, so I want to be clear about that. Uh, I'm happy to say my reasons why. Um, so uh, I will. Um, uh, and uh, so the motion right now is a motion to amend the agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 
All right, that motion passes. So the first item was a motion by Councilmember Cano uh, to have the city attorney uh, waive her attorney uh, client privilege to talk about um, uh, uh, what, well, why don't you restate how you are framing your question, Councilmember Cano? I'll make sure I understand that. Yes. <clears throat> so. My my baseline intent here is to ask us as a council body to withdraw our appeal that is currently being heard at the Minnesota Supreme Court. It is my understanding, based on what we just heard from the city attorney, that in order to entertain such a motion, because I am asking for information before making that motion, um, we would need to waive our attorney client privilege so that our city attorney can in this space with our voters have a conversation about uh, whether or not procedurally we as a city can withdraw um, the the appeal at this moment in time. So I'm asking for a point of information which requires us to waive our um, attorney client privilege and I just sent an email to to our attorney to see if there's any way that we can really curtail that that waiver to just address this very specific question and then based on the information we get on that um, see if if we can consider a motion to withdraw the appeal so all right so the the question is whether the city attorney um, can give us advice on whether at this point uh, if council members wished to vote that way we could withdraw an appeal to the Supreme Court where oral argument has already happened and my understanding is the Supreme Court has stated that they would issue some form of opinion by the end of this week and Ms. Siegel if you could just one more time <clears throat> explain why you believe that that is covered under attorney client privilege I just want to make sure the council members understand that so uh, Madam Chair and Council Member Cano for two reasons. One, it's attorney work product um, because we're in the middle of litigation. Second, it's providing advice, legal advice to the council, so it's just generally covered under the attorney client privilege. Okay. All right. Um, and again, I, I still can't get on my speaker management, so I don't know if someone could come down and help me or. Madam President, we had the ZMP uh, meeting rescheduled, and because of the ZMP meeting using speaker management, it's been uh, uh, screwed up. The system's not working right now, so okay. I would suggest you use the red speaker cards. Okay. So, did you my... open? Did you open speaker management? If someone could walk down here and help me, yes, I've opened it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that would probably be the easiest way. Otherwise, we'll just use the card so I can see um, people's comments. So, all right. So, the motion is uh, clarified. Um, Councilmember Gordon's in queue, and then I want to put myself in queue. Well, I'll support the uh, the motion. I think we just need to hear a little bit of clarity about whether we have any authority, and we can. Um, uh, withdraw an appeal when it's in the lap or whatever on the desk of the Minnesota Supreme Court and I don't even know if that's legally an option so I think um, taking away the attorney client privilege just to hear answers on that would be really helpful for me at this point so I'll support the motion okay um, well I I generally think it is a bad uh, idea setting a bad precedent for us to waive our attorney client privilege uh, around uh, items where uh, we are getting legal advice from our attorney I guess I'll just speak from my own experience uh, a little bit which is just to say I have never heard of a situation where there's a withdrawal at this point to the Supreme Court and maybe there is um, again it's sort of at a far down the path procedurally where the oral argument has happened uh, we know the Supreme Court is going uh, to uh, rule within approximately two days um, and uh, other than situations where there's actually a, a settlement of a case which is a situation then when you say to the court you don't need to rule because the parties have resolved uh, whatever was their dispute and this is not that type of situation um, so uh, my 
just supposition? Is this is something that is uh, not a question that's been explored very often, whether a, a appeal could be withdrawn at this stage. Um, so the motion before us again is to uh, vote on whether to um, uh, waive the attorney-client privilege. Any further comment or discussion from colleagues? Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I don't know how any council member could responsibly vote for this with no information, uh, aside from what we have heard in front of us today. There would have been an opportunity for briefings by our attorney, uh, which would have prepared us differently for this vote, but that did not happen. So again, I would hope in the future, if we're making important decisions like this, uh, that some of this preparatory work is done uh, in order to allow us to make decisions with information that we cannot get here right in front of everyone. But I can't vote for this right now with the information that I have. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? So if we could please um, just allow the finalization of the discussion on this item. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in approval of the motion, please say aye. 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 All in opposed, say nay. 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 And that motion fails. Second, uh, Councilmember Cano, did you want to make a second motion? Um, I was really hoping we could have a, an informed conversation here with our uh, residents and voters to um, get the information needed for me to be able to make the second motion. So I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to make the motion to withdraw the appeal because I need the city attorney to be able to respond to some of those questions. And those questions were not allowed to be answered at this space right now. And, um, and I just feel like, you know, we, need, we needed that information to, to be able to, to have me make that, that second motion. So I, I don't want to um, pretend that um, a motion to withdraw the appeal without without that information is um, viable in, in any way, shape, or form. So I appreciate you, um, Council Vice President Glidden, in allowing me to bring forward my um, amendments to the agenda and to try to have this conversation. I think many of you know my position on this issue, and um, I'm really disappointed that our city resources are being used to um, keep people in poverty. So I'm sorry about that. So we'll continue on with our report to committees, uh, community development and regulatory services with the vice chair, Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, we have 10 items on the agenda for today. However, the 10th item will be referred uh, report to the zoning and planning committee. Uh, so I will not be forwarding it for the, for the full council. It's, it's subsequently going to the transportation committee. Uh, the first item is the 2015 Department of Housing and Urban Development Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Uh, items 2, 3, and 4 are land sales. Items 5 is a rental dwelling license uh, denial. 
items uh, six are licensed business and gambling applications. Uh, seven is the uh, City of Minneapolis partnership applications to the National Endowment for the Arts. Eight is a proposed restructuring of existing neighborhood revit revitalization program. Um, and then item nine is a director's fee schedule for a, bass, a gas burner per fee permit structure. Uh, and as I mentioned, item number 10 uh, will not be forwarded to the full council this Friday. Happy to stand for any questions. All right, thank you. Next we have health, environment, and community engagement with council member uh, Gordon. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee is bringing forward. And can we five... close the door, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead. We're, we'll be bringing uh, five items forward for approval on Friday. The first item is two appointments to our Minneapolis Advisory Committee on Aging um, Mary Tracy from Ward 1 and Richard Kevinney from Ward 3. Second item is accepting a grant from Hennepin County for $24,000 to provide services at school-based clinics. Third item is accepting a uh, grant from the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the amount of $1,700,000. This is over five years. Um, and uh, this is a grant that will help us uh, work on preventing youth violence, um, um, dating violence, and also youth violence more generally. Um, I'll just note that um, the, out of 100 points in this grant application, we got 99. So um, it was a great application, and, and we're glad to be receiving that. Fourth item is authorizing um, uh, some amendments to community wellness contracts, basically just to extend those with um, three agencies that we're contracting with. And the last item is um, authorizing a joint powers agreement and memorandum of understanding for youth curfew truancy services. This is fairly significant because this will authorize a joint powers agreement and memorandum of understandings uh, with the city, Hennepin County, and Minneapolis Public Schools to keep our um, juvenile supervision center operating and also keep those support services and resources there so that we can help meet the needs of uh, youth that are um, getting involved with curfew and truancy issues. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gordon. Um, our Intergovernmental Relations uh, Committee will be meeting shortly. Next, we have Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management with Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, today, we have eight items um, for your consideration for Friday. Um, of those eight items, uh, three are donations um, to the city, uh, three are grant acceptances. And one is a contract with the University of Minnesota Veterinary Clinic for veterinary services. And the last one um, that is maybe a little bit more interesting is an MOU with the Metropolitan Police Department of DC for police officer participation at the Presidential Inauguration Task Force. So that's all we have. Thank you, Councilmember Yang. Next we have Ways and Means with Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, Ways and Means has 14 items for consideration on Friday. First is a legal settlement with City Church versus the City of Minneapolis. We have a contract amendment with Kirby Kennedy for court reporting, a grant application for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, a uh, low bid with Messenger Construction Company for Minneapolis Convention Center Exhibit Hall entry fronts, a bid for HuffCore for Minneapolis Convention Center for operable wall partition, partition replacement. There's also a contract amendment with Iowa and Associates Corporation for Fridley Softening Plant. Um, also a contract amendment with Morcon Construction for elevator upgrade. Item number eight is a contract for architectural and engineering services with Wald Architects. Uh, and that's for fire stations number four and number eight, the, those renovation projects. Number nine is a uh, HUD uh, 2016 consolidated plan, final department allocations. Item 10 is a contract with uh, FR Secure uh, Information Security Consulting for payment standards compliance services. 11 is a contract with Insight Public Sector for ongoing software and workflow, workflow support services. 12 is a contract amendment with Delta Works LLC, uh, continued support uh, services. We have a contract amendment with Fagri BD Consulting for federal representation services. And the final item is the Fridley Filter Water Plant Rehabilitation Project. This is a license agreement with Anoka County. We'll be happy to answer any questions on those 14 items. All right, thank you, Councilmember Quincy. And finally, we have a zoning and planning report from Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. We just 
at 9.30 had a rescheduled meeting of the Zoning and Planning Committee. We have nine items um, that came through this morning. Um, item uh, one is a landmark designation. Item two was postponed. Item three is about uh, accessory dwelling units. Item four was opting out of the state's temporary family health care dwellings. Item five is a downtown public rate realm framework plan that we referred to TPW. Item six is amending our heritage preservation ordinances to align how we appoint uh, members. Uh, item seven, with the other, other commissions, item seven is about uh, airport noise regulations, moving them from the zoning code to the building code. And items eight and nine are staff referrals for new ordinances. Thank you. And then Transportation Public Works is not on this reports of the committee list, but my understanding is Councilmember Reich had an announcement or a couple items to describe. That, that is correct, uh, Madam Vice President. Um, this item was approved in TPW on August 8th meeting, but was postponed in Ways and Means uh, on August 15th to allow for further review by staff, and it was approved by Ways and Means on August 29th. Uh, therefore, uh, the committee will be advancing uh, the uh, <coughs> for consideration today. And it's advanced metering infrastructure request for proposals, and it's authorizing issuance of requests for proposals uh, for that service. And I will move that, or I'll be moving that item on Friday. All right. Thank you very much. We have concluded with our committee reports then. Um, we have no further business uh, before this committee. I will just note that we are going immediately from this committee into our Intergovernmental Relations Committee, and we have uh, a lot of people who are here to participate in that. And uh, they will need just a, about three to five minutes to um, uh, do, do the media piece so that we're, we're on air for the Intergovernmental Relations uh, Committee. So you can expect that. Uh, thank you to Committee of the Whole, and we are adjourned.